All right, guys. So we're back for another episode because we just heard the Fed raised rates a half a percent. Last time they raised rates a quarter of a percent. And as a result, the mortgage rates went up 1.75%. So I brought on Tim Murphy again to give us some context to let us know whether or not we should expect like another crazy increase in interest rates. And what does this mean for the housing market? Like where are we at? What's going on? So what's up, Tim? Brian, loving life, man. You got you gave me a chore there. You gave me a huge list. Yeah, so you're, you you sound crystal clear. By the way, you sound good. Ah, you sound like perfect. you're on the on the radio, brother. Yeah, I feel like it. Okay, so let's let's talk about that. So the Fed's raised the rates a half a percent. Now, what's important in their discussion? It's not so much the raising of the rates, but it's the release after the fact. Because everybody thinks that rates go up because the Fed's raised the rates. It's not the case. Right. The Fed's raised the rates based on their predictions. Yeah. And so right now like they came out and said, "Hey, we're not going to. You know what? We're we're taking a second look." We were going to raise them 0.75. We've come back. Now we're at 0.5. That shows some concern. So all of a sudden, hey, they're, they look like they're backing off a little bit. That's a great sign for us. Oh, so instead of them raising them more than we predicted, they're actually raising them less than we predicted. So it's actually a good right. thing, not a bad thing. So instead of mortgage rates going up, what's the prediction? Well, the, the, the rates are still going to go up. I mean, it's a fact of life. <laughs> yeah. It's inflation, but not at the extreme level that we expected. See, what, what's happened is rates have moved up so fast that what's traded are mortgage-backed securities. And, and the mortgage-backed securities haven't gone up fast enough to go on the table to be sold on the open market. So that's why rates, even though rates are going up, you're seeing a lot of points with these rates. You're not seeing a lot of par rates, no point deals. And yeah. so that's a hairy, that's a hairy point because there's not a lot of buyers because the buyers can't predict where things are going to end, right? That's the key. So by the feds making this announcement, cutting back, not being as aggressive as we expected them to be, that's a good sign telling us, hey, you know what? The feds are thinking it through. They're watching the impact on the marketplace as well as the impact on housing overall. All right. So what does that mean for the housing market? So what I've done is I've done just a little quick glance at the market and it looks like inventory is up. Days on market is up a little bit and I feel it like I have listings and buyers and it feels like things have softened a bit. Like three weeks ago, I felt like the market was at the peak. Like so in my, in my own little, just small perspective, I feel like we climbed this crazy mountain and everybody kept saying, oh, the market's going to crash. And it just shot up. And every time they said it was going to crash, it went faster upward. And now I feel like we finally, we've like, you know, that like that, that, uh, when the Grinch has stole Christmas, when that sleigh is at the top of the mountain and it's like, oh, it's to go to the edge. all of a sudden. Yeah. So, so what we think is right around Easter, you know, we got super quiet right before Easter, yeah. Easter kicked in everybody came back and said, you know what, rates are getting too high. We saw a lot of first-time home buyer burnout. We saw a lot of affordability, affordability issues. Oh, easy to say at this point in time. But, but more importantly, what's happened, Brian, is you're right. You know, that cruise line or that cruise ship is, has already started making that turn. And we, we say that because we've seen three things. A, we're seeing closing help. Dude, we never saw closing help, right? Yeah. That's massive. I mean, yeah. so all of a sudden, sellers are recognizing that they need to pay a little bit of closing assistance to get some deals done. Number two, I think the sellers have, have realized, you know what? I may have missed the mark or we're at that pinnacle like you're talking about. And at this point in time, we got to jump in and do it. So we're seeing yeah. a rush to the marketplace. Yeah. Unfortunately, the buyers are backing off. Days of market are starting to go up. Yeah. Which means there's more inventory available in the marketplace. So definitely some yeah. changes. I mean, it's happening. And, and at this point in time, that's a good sign for the economy. It's a good sign for the housing market because it means yeah. things are slowly starting to get rebalanced. Yeah, and I, I agree with you on that. So I would say three things. First of all, anybody and specifically investors who have like rental property or, you know, just an investment property who are thinking, hey, I'm just going to keep riding this until we get to the top. I think we're at the top. Now's the time. If you were debating at all selling your rental property, you wanted to get top dollar. I think now's the time. Number two, anybody who's been playing um, with the mortgage companies trying to get your, um, uh, what, what was that when they did deferments and all that, when we were doing the COVID stuff, like a lot of people. Oh, the are modifications. Sort of, the yeah, forbearance. stretching out your right. modification, waiting to see, like if that's yeah. not going well and you were like, hey, you know what, 
we were going to like list if and when now's also the time, like instead of waiting and doing a foreclosure or a short sale or whatever, like the, the peak of the peak is here. If you want to see what your house is worth, you know, have that conversation before the market starts to turn and it becomes harder to sell your house. If you're in any kind of mortgage trouble, the thing that's helped us is because everybody's got so much equity. That's why there's not a lot of short sales and foreclosures. Cause it's like, if you're in trouble, you just sell your house and you'll make money. And I think that's it. So, and then for buyers three, I don't think rates are going to go down and I don't no. think house prices no. are going to correct. I think they're just going to sort of like right. level off. And, right. and I think what you're seeing is like not so much house prices going down, but the ridiculous, no appraisal way over asking price, you know, this crazy. No like inspections. I, oh, yes. Yeah. And I have not multiple houses. Sight unseen. Oh yeah, what the I heck have, is that all about? I have Brian? multiple Seriously. houses right now with appraisal issues. Like, and, wow. and it's because I felt like there was this little burst where everybody was like, "I don't care. I just I'm I'm freaking out because interest rates are going up. I think that is over. So I think those are the three people that need to make a move. I don't think that there's going to be a scenario in which house prices are going to go down. Like, if you're thinking, "Hey, let me wait and let me see what that market is like in a year." I don't know if that's going to give you a better house price. I don't know also what interest rates are going to do. Like you might see a better interest rate, but I don't know. So Tim, that's more of your world. What is the like 12 yeah. month, 24 month interest rate situation? Well, you know, nobody has a crystal ball, yeah, but of course, yeah. you know, the prediction is rates will continue to go up. The concern right now is stagflation, believe it or not, okay. uh, where interest rates are going up. Unfortunately, costs are still going up and the economy is, is, is basically taking a pause. And, and that's what we're starting to see. I mean, look at the price of gasoline, Brian. I mean, $4 to it was what's California, six bucks plus, right? Car up. Yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. That, that's what I'm talking about. So, so that's inflation. And now you've got that going on. You've got all of this inventory, all these um, all these truckloads of materials in China that can't get across the water. They're stuck in their ports, right? So we got this huge boxed you know, inventory that's coming out, number one. And then we've got this, unfortunately, this Ukraine-Russian conflict, which sad but having a major impact on commodities oh grains wheat yeah it's it's nuts what's going on there then you got the the russian gas so th that tells us really important things it says inflation is here to stay right now the right, federal so government's going to continue doing things so we're going to see rates still inch up over time all right let's talk about the three to five year real quick so here's what i see is that the scenario that created a lot of this was the lack of new construction has not resolved itself, but I'm saying that the train is on its way. I just talked to someone over the weekend. There's several right. hundred, several thousand houses going up in Charles County. Um, not so much in, you know, we're just talking Southern Maryland right now, not so much Calvert and St. Mary's, but I feel like that nationally, what we're hearing is that you know, these projects don't get off the ground in 12 months. It takes years to get a whole neighborhood sort of under the legal stuff. You got to build schools and all this stuff. But I think all that is now coming. The, right. the profits have, you know, shown to be good and they're building these houses. So I think we're going to see an influx of houses in the next three to five years, which will push down on the prices and it'll push down on the, you know, the lack of inventory. So I think the good news is there'll be some new houses to buy for everybody. And I think that will soften things up. So I think the pendulum has started to swing, you know, artificially because of interest rates. But I think as the houses get built, that will also continue to push it towards a buyer's market. There'll be more houses for these 7 million buyers on these 1.5 million houses for sale, you know, as of like a month and a half ago. So I think we're going to see that in the future. So I feel like that the other thing that I just want to say real quick is we're not in any of a, a sort of a chaotic, crazy, scary situation. Like there's no, no. indicators no. that we're going to see a crash, that we're going to see house prices dip 20%. People are going to start going into foreclosure. There's no abundance of bad mortgages or not abundance of people defaulting on their mortgages. I just stopped right there, Tim. Like, so... <laughs> Is, no, is, no, is, is that, do you agree with that? Like, yeah, I totally agree. So here's the key. Ready? The last default was based on, ready? Over exuberant on prices, yeah. appraisals, not supporting values, people getting into some really bad loans. And I, I mean, overall speculation, like it was going out of style. People are buying houses to live in today. And Brian, you missed one yeah, critical right. piece. Yep. What's happening to the rental market? 
I mean, seventeen percent up this year. That's crazy. Yeah, huge. Yeah. And so you know that just says to me, look, if I'm going to spend you know twenty five hundred dollars in a payment and and three or four hundred dollars is going to go to principal, that's like putting money in a four one k. You know, in my opinion, hey, you know what? You yeah. shift it from one to the other, but it's better than paying you know for rent forever and getting zero out of it. I mean, the zero tax benefits, zero principal return, zero appreciation. And yeah. you know what zero times zero is, right? Z zero. Z exactly. if you're from Canada. Yep. So Brian, with that said, man, let's That's keep plugging deep. it I'm out, sorry. brother. Let's yeah, man. Make it happen. Thank you, Tim. I appreciate it. Always. Good to Have see you. Have a great sir. evening. Bye.